I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you about CoQ10 and its effect on the brain. So the brain is obviously one of the most metabolically active organs in the body. And for this reason, the brain requires an ample supply of energy to function at optimal levels. CoQ10, which provides real energy beginning at the cellular level, as I've told you before, has been found to offer several benefits to the nervous system, including protection from several types of disease. Several animal studies have actually found CoQ10 to be neuroprotective. In traumatic head injuries, like what I've dealt with in my life, the brain suffers from ongoing damage even after the initial trauma. This is due to oxidative stress primarily, but also inflammation and impaired mitochondrial function, and CoQ10 appears to alleviate these problems. In a study of rats exposed to a head injury, CoQ10 protected mitochondria from damage and reduced cell death in the brain. These same mechanisms of brain injury also occur in human traumatic brain injuries, making CoQ10 a promising management strategy for all kinds of head trauma. Animal models of stroke also showed benefit from CoQ10, mitigating the damage seen in the brain and reducing markers of oxidative stress, inflammation, and cell death in affected tissues. There's even promising data associated with higher CoQ10 intake reducing brain damage caused by ischemic stroke and even a lower risk of stroke. Blood CoQ10 levels were recently evaluated in patients recovering from a stroke and compared to healthy controls. The stroke patients in this study actually had significantly lower blood levels of CoQ10. There was also a correlation between low CoQ10 levels and a greater severity of brain injury as measured by clinical scales, like the NIH stroke scale, even the modified Rankin scale. Neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are common in older age, and CoQ10 may actually be protective against these debilitating disorders also. In models of Alzheimer's dementia, CoQ10 has been found to improve memory and limit the damage caused by beta amyloid, which of course is that harmful protein that builds up in the brain and is implicated in the deterioration of brain function. CoQ10 also protects mitochondrial function and limits brain inflammation, all of which contribute to declining cognitive function over time. In animal models of Parkinson's disease, affected animals typically suffer from progressive loss of control of movement, and treatment of these animals with CoQ10 leads to improvements in motor function, as seen on tests of muscle coordination and in motor tasks like swimming. So in this way, CoQ10 actually slows the progression of Parkinson's. CoQ10 even improves response of brain cancer cells to treatment. Glioblastoma multiform is the most aggressive and deadly form of brain cancer. Despite years of research, treatment for this rapidly growing tumor is rarely capable of containing its spread. However, a 2018 study provides hope that CoQ10 may be a useful tool in the management of glioblastoma. Researchers found that human glioblastoma cells treated with CoQ10 were far more sensitive to radiation, commonly used as a treatment for this brain cancer. These results suggest that CoQ10 is a promising addition to the medical management of glioblastoma, amplifying the effect of current standard treatments. So to recap for you guys on this, CoQ10 or coenzyme Q10, otherwise known as ubiquinone, is a critical component in the electron transport chain within the mitochondria inside all of our living cells. Basically, it's the energy that fuels the energy furnace, which are the mitochondria. Mitochondria, again, are essentially our cellular power generators, or energy furnaces, as I like to call them, converting the energy stored in nutrients into a form that can be used by the cell to do all kinds of cellular work throughout the body. Without CoQ10, cellular energy supply fails and cells cannot function normally. Additionally, CoQ10 is a potent scavenger of potentially harmful free radicals, protecting cells from the oxidative stress that contributes to dysfunction and many diseases, and is also one of the best cholesterol antioxidants around.
All cells require energy to function, and while this energy initially comes from nutrients obtained through the diet, like carbohydrates and fat, it must be converted into a universal form that each cell can utilize, otherwise known as a high-energy molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. The great majority of ATP is formed in your mitochondria. In the mitochondria, the energy stored in nutrients is passed through several intermediates in the process that's known as the electron transport chain, ultimately leading to the synthesis of nutrients new ATP. CoQ10 is actually one of these critical intermediates. Without CoQ10, this whole process will grind to a halt and the production of ATP is severely compromised. So for this reason, as I've told you before, CoQ10 is vital to the metabolism of all living cells. And this is one reason why everyone should be taking CoQ10 at the very least, or even its superior form, ubiquinol, the activated form of CoQ10, and they're both fat-soluble nutrients, so you want to try to take them again in a soft gel, usually in the morning with food, because they will give you some energy. Anyone can benefit from CoQ10, but especially those of us 40 years old and older, because after age 40, CoQ10 levels in the body drop precipitously, and it's much harder to convert CoQ10 into ubiquinol. As I've told you before, there really is no recommended dose of CoQ10. You want to try to take enough to replenish the heart and give you some energy that you can really feel. So see what you can do with at least 200 milligrams a day. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy. Thank <laughs> you.